Stress, how does it affect you? But more importantly, how do you view it? The fact is, on any given day, you could have any number of stresses playing on your mind. Bear with me one second. <sighs> Stress is like commuting. Always made better with a coffee though. What about the stresses of your day-to-day -day work life? And even after your working day, what about all the background stuff that's always there, like money, health, relationship issues? I mean, the list goes on, right? And I haven't even mentioned having children yet and the stresses that go along with that. What, and then you're gonna get home and no matter what type of day you've had or whether you train in the morning and just crack on with your session and expect to nail them every single time? And what happens if you don't? Oh, what if we can find little psychological ways of not only just taking into account the stress from our training, but also taking into account the stress from our lives and trying to create a healthier balance? Well, yesterday I sat down with a friend and fellow Level 3 coach Joel Enoch from the Hartree Jets who train out of Edinburgh, and we had a chat about some ideas he had about how you can best find a good balance and therefore not be too harsh on yourselves when maybe sometimes you don't hit the sessions and how you can nail the sessions that you need to nail. So, so Joel and I were having a very interesting conversation just now and I thought let's get it on camera about um, training stress and how to separate that from life stress and then how to adapt your training to fit around your life and make sure your expectations are set, that's about yeah, that's, that's a good summary, summary, isn't it? Yeah, so, so my thought on this isn't just for people who are, who are athletes and triathletes, this is just for people who exercise. And you know, sometimes you might go and you exercise and it's, you just have a really like, bad day and you feel flat and you think, well, why is this? And I think the one thing that athletes, people who exercise don't do very well is they don't um, think about how much the stress of life in general can impact on their actual ability to exercise well or perform well, if you want to think it in those terms. And so I kind of think of it that if you were fully rested and absolutely on peak form and you were going to go to your exercise class or your training session, you've got 100 percent, 100 units or 100 credits of ability. But like, let's say it was a nightmare getting your kid off to school in the morning and they're going through a really rough time. Or let's say that you're you've had a really difficult day at work and an argument with your boss, that's going to eat away at your credit. So now your 100% is ticking down and you've got to think of your stress score in that sense. Mm. If you've had a really, really bad day, it's going to bring your capacity from 100% down to maybe 65, 60, 50%. And so then that is your new capacity. So then when you go to your training session, you've got to think, right, I'm not going to perform as I would have done at 100%. I'm going to perform at a lesser level. And my expectations for that have to be less. Yeah. And if we can manage our expectations, then we're not going to go into a session and feel flat afterwards because oh, I, didn't, I didn't feel very good today, I didn't perform very, day, very well today, that's a failure. No, actually, you just you had a limited capacity, you did the best that you could. And if you can just take a pause before you do something like, just before you do a training session, and you just go, right, how am I today? And you can answer that question in pretty much a moment. You know, we're not talking about taking five minutes to sit down and write anything out. We're just taking a pause, have a moment. How do I feel today? What is my capacity for this session today? Do I actually need to adjust it, first of all? Yeah. And if I don't feel so bad that I need to adjust it, what's my expectations for how well I'm gonna swim or bike or run or do whatever else it might be that I'm gonna do? I think if we can get into the habit of doing that, we're more likely to frame our session in a much more healthy way that's gonna leave us feeling more positive uh, after it. You've almost gotta have, it's like checks and balances, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, with, yeah, with definitely. Life and, life and training. And in, and in that moment, if we can put that little break in just before, you know, 
even periodically in life actually, because this isn't just about training, this might be, well, how am I gonna perform today at work? Or how am I gonna perform today in my marriage this evening because I've had a really bad day? Yeah. If we can put these little checks in, we give ourselves the opportunity to uh, make good decisions. And in coaching world, we talk about you know elite athlete decisions and those kind of things, and it's just because those people are very good at taking a moment to analyze where they're at. Yeah. And if you can do that, then you constantly assess accurately how you feel, what your capacity is to perform in, in any area of your life. And if you can do that, then you're managing the expectations much better and not leaving yourself feeling flat and disappointed because you feel like you underperformed. Well, you didn't, yeah. you were just tired. People are generally feeling-based or data-based. So if you're feeling-based, then it's just a case of asking the question, how, did I, how do I feel today? Yeah. And if you're data-based, it's a case of asking the question, well, out of 10, how stressful was it? Or coming up with your own score that works for you. And, and for most people, that, along with just asking the regular question, should be enough to, yeah, get a handle on how you can expect to perform. I would agree with that. Thanks, mate. It's all right. That's no good problem. stuff. Stay tuned.